Hello and welcome back to the Tech Blackboard. Today in this part 11 of DP203 exam question and answer series, we are going to cover 15 very important questions on DP203. And today we are going to focus questions based on Azure Databricks, Azure Data Lake, Azure Data Factory and much more. So let's dive into 15 important questions on DP203 and learn something new today. And friends, it's very important that you watch all the previous parts as we have already covered 130 questions on DP203, which you just cannot afford to miss. Tons of important concepts are explained in all these videos that will take you one step closer to this much demanding Azure certificate DP203. As a bonus, you will also get access to Microsoft documentation and a free PDF file containing all the questions discussed in last 10 parts which will help you in further self-learning. Links to all the videos are available in the description box. And as far as this video goes, you can get a free PDF file containing all the 15 questions with answers and for that you have to tell me the correct answers for the question number 134, 140 and 143. Stay in the video and you will find all the answers to these questions in this video. And friends, if this video is time worthy for you and you gain some knowledge, Please take a brief moment to appreciate us by liking and sharing this video and also subscribing to the channel. Please do not forget to press that bell icon to receive all the notification of our upcoming videos. So let's begin our part 11 with question number 131. The question says that you create an Azure Databricks cluster and specify an additional library to install. The problem is that when you attempt to load the library to a notebook, the library is not found. You need to identify the cause of this issue. What should you review? Your options are notebook logs, cluster event logs, global init script logs, or should you review workspace log? And the correct answer for this question is option B, cluster event logs. Moving on with question number 132, it says that your company analyzes images from security cameras and sends alerts to security team that respond to unusual activity. The solution uses Azure Databricks. You need to send Apache Spark level events, Spark structured streaming metrics and application metrics to Azure Monitor. Which three actions should you perform in sequence? Your options are create a data source in Azure Monitor, configure the Databricks cluster to use Databricks monitoring library. Then the third one is deploy Grafana to an Azure virtual machine. Build a Spark Listener Log Analytics 1.0 snapshot.jar and the last action is create drop wizard counters in application code. The correct answer in sequence is first you have to configure the Databricks cluster to use Databricks monitoring library. After that, you need to build a Spark Listener Log Analytics and then the last step is create a drop wizard counters in application code. Now let's move on with question number 133. Here you can see the question says that you have an Azure Data Lake Storage Gen2 account that contains JSON files for the customer. The files contains two attributes named first name and last name. You need to copy the data from the JSON files to an Azure Synapse Analytics table by using Azure Databricks. The new column must be created that concatenates the first name and last name values. You create the following components, a destination table in Azure Synapse, an Azure Blob Storage Container, a service principal. Now what you need to do is choose five actions that you should perform in sequence next in Databricks Notebook. And here you can see we are given with eight actions and out of these eight actions, you have to select just five and that two in correct sequence. So let's check out the first action that will be this one, which is mount the data lake storage onto DBFS. Then the second action would be read the file into a data frame. The third action would be perform transformation on data frame. And after this, the fourth one would be specify a temporary folder to stage the data. And the fifth one would be write the results to a table in Azure Synapse. So please note down the correct five actions in correct sequence. It's very important that you note the correct sequence of the actions because telling the wrong sequence in the question and you will lose marks. Now let's move on with question number 134. The question says that you are designing an Azure Databricks interactive cluster. You need to ensure that the cluster meets the following requirement. Enable auto termination, retain cluster configuration indefinitely after cluster termination. 
what should you recommend your options are start the cluster after it is terminated the second option is pin the cluster the third one is clone the cluster after it is terminated and the last option is terminate the cluster manually at process completion and the correct answer to this question is option b pin the cluster and friends this is because to keep an interactive cluster configuration even after it has been terminated for more than 30 days an administrator can pin a cluster to a cluster list and that's the reason behind choosing pin the cluster as the answer to this question. Now let's quickly jump to question number 135. The question says that you are designing an Azure Databricks table. The table will ingest an average of 20 million streaming events per day. You need to persist the events in the table for the use in incremental load pipeline jobs in Azure Databricks. The solution must minimize the storage costs and incremental load times. What should you include in the solution? Your options are partition by date time field. The second option is sync to Azure queue storage. The third one is include a watermark column. And the fourth one is use a JSON format for the physical data storage. And the correct answer to this question is option B sync to Azure queue storage. Let's take one more question on Azure Databricks. Coming up question number 136 and that says that you have an Azure Databricks workspace named Workspace 1 in the standard pricing tier. You need to configure Workspace 1 to support auto-scaling all-purpose clusters. The solution must meet the following requirements. The first one is automatically scale down workers when the cluster is underutilized for 3 minutes. The second one is minimize the time it takes to scale to the maximum number of workers. And the third requirement is minimize the cost. What should you do first? Your options are enable container services for Workspace 1, upgrade Workspace 1 to the premium pricing tier. The third option is set cluster mode to high concurrency. And the fourth one is create a cluster policy in Workspace 1. And the correct answer to this question is that you should upgrade Workspace 1 to premium pricing tier. Coming up now is question number 137. The question says that you plan to implement an Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2 container that will contain CSV files. The size of the files will vary based on the number of events that occur per hour. Now file sizes range from 4 GB to 5 GB. You need to ensure that the files stored in the container are optimized for batch processing. What should you do? Options given are convert the files to JSON convert the files to Avro, compress the files or merge the files. And the answer that I have chosen is option D, merge the files. And my logic is that the question says batch processing. Now friends, in case of batch processing, it makes more sense to merge the files so that we can reduce the IO cycles or input output cycles. Now to reduce the input output cycles, what I can do is to merge the smaller files. Here you can see the question says the file size can vary from 4 KB to 5 GB. And this tells us that there is a possibility of having very small file sizes like 4 KB. And that's why to optimize the batch processing, I will rather merge the smaller files and then send them for further processing. Now let's move on with question number 138. The question says that you are planning a solution to aggregate streaming data that originates in Apache Kafka and is output to Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2. The developers who will implement the stream processing solution use Java. Which service should you recommend using to process streaming data? Your options are Azure Event Hubs, Azure Data Factory, Azure Stream Analytics or Azure Databricks. And the correct answer to this question is option D, Azure Databricks. And with that, let's move on with question number 139. The question says that you need to implement an Azure Databricks cluster that automatically connects to Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2 by using Azure Active Directory or Azure AD integration. How should you configure the new cluster? Here you can see that we have to answer on two levels. The first one is tier. So we have to basically tell which tier to choose and then we have to tell the advanced option to enable. So let's first select the tier. The correct tier for this business case is premium. And then the correct answer for the advanced option to enable is Azure Data Lake Storage Credential Pass-Through. Now let's move on with question number 140. The question says that which Azure Data Factory process involves using compute services to produce data to feed production environment with cleansed data. And your options are connect and collect. The second one is transform and enrich. The third one is publish. And the fourth one is monitor. The correct answer to this question is option B, transform and enrich. 
Now let's jump on to question number 141. The question says that you have a new Azure Data Factory environment. You need to periodically analyze pipeline execution from the last 60 days to identify trends in execution duration. Also, the solution must use Azure Log Analytics to query the data and create charts. Which diagnostic setting should you configure in Data Factory? To answer, select the appropriate option in the answer area. Here you can see the question is divided in two parts. The first one is log type. The second one is storage location. The options given for log types are activity runs, all matrix, pipeline runs, and the last one is trigger runs. And here our correct answer for the log type is pipeline runs. Looking at the options for storage location, we have an Azure Event Hub, then we have an Azure Storage Account, and then lastly we have Azure Log Analytics. And the correct answer for this part of the question is an Azure Storage Account. Now here comes a very interesting question, question number 142. The question says that you are creating dimensions for a data warehouse in an Azure Synapse Analytics dedicated SQL pool. You create a table by using transact SQL statement shown in the following exhibit. Here you can see that we have a create statement which is creating a dimension table called dim product. You can also note all the columns along with their data type. Further, the question says that use the drop down menus to select the answer choices that completes each statement based on the information presented in the graphic. The first one is dim product, which is this table is a slowly changing dimension or SCD and here you have to tell what kind of SCD is this table. Is it type 0, type 1 or type 2? Now before answering this question, let's take a closer look at the structure of DIM product table. And here you can see that we are given with product key, product source ID, product name and lot of other information. The most important thing to note in the structure of this table is these two columns which are named as cell start date and cell end date. Now let me take you to the Microsoft documentation and let's understand what kind of SCD will fit this business case. So here I am on the Microsoft documentation which will help us choose between slowly changing dimension types. The first one is type 1 dimension. Let's scroll down a little bit more and then we reach to type 2 SCD. And you can read all about type 2 SCD in this section. However, the most important section for the type 2 SCD is this one where Microsoft has given this example storing the data of sales people in a sales region. So you can see that we have data for two people here. The first one is June and then we have Suzanne. And for each of these sales people, we also have a start date and end date which is kind of telling you since when this sales people started its operation in some sales region and then in the second image below you can see now we have three records one for the june and now susan has two records the most interesting part is start date and end date the first record for susan now contains a end date earlier it had a end date which is far far in future but now we can see the end date is 21st of March 2021. So which tells us that Suzanne is now not operating in South Central region. However, now she has started with Southeast region. So I hope now you understand in type 2 SCD, we maintain versions of record. And how are these versions maintained? By using start date and end date. Coming back to the presentation, I'm very hopeful you can already answer this question. The correct answer for the first part of the question is type 2 SCD. Now let's move on with second part of the question. It says advanced option to enable and your options are a surrogate key, a business key or an audit column. The correct answer for this part is a business key. Now let's check out the explanation of the same. We have already understood the type 2 SCD in Microsoft documentation. So let me move to the business key. So a business key or a natural key is an index that identifies uniqueness of a row based on columns that exist naturally in a table according to the business rules. For example, business keys are customer code in a customer table, composite of sales order header number and sales order item line number within a sales order details table. So I hope you understood the logic behind choosing type 2 SCD for the first part of the question and business key for the second part of the question.
Now let's move ahead with question number 143. The question says that you need to schedule an Azure Data Factory pipeline to execute when a new file arrives in Azure Data Lake Gen 2 storage container. Which type of trigger should you use? Your options are on demand, tumbling window, schedule or event. And the correct answer for this question is option D event. And in case you are interested to know how to create a trigger that runs pipeline in response to a storage event, then this is the Microsoft documentation that you should read and this will give you all the information that you need. Now let's move on with question number 144. The question says that you have two Azure Data Factory instances named ADF Dev and ADF Prod. The ADF Dev connects to an Azure DevOps Git repository. You publish changes from the main branch of Git repository to ADF Dev. You need to deploy the artifacts from ADF Dev to ADF Prod. What should you do first? Your options are from ADF Dev, modify the Git configuration, the second one is from ADF Dev, create a linked service. The third one is from Azure DevOps, create a release pipeline. And the fourth one is from Azure DevOps, update the main branch. And the correct answer for this question is option C, from Azure DevOps, create a release pipeline. Let's move on to question number 145, which is the last question for the part 11 of DP203 exam Q&A series. Let's read the question. The question says that you have an Azure Data Factory. You need to examine the pipeline failures from last 60 days. What should you use? Your options are the activity log blade for the Data Factory resource. The second one is the monitor and manage app in Data Factory. The third one is the resource help blade for the Data Factory resource. And the fourth one is Azure Monitor. And the correct answer for this question is option D, Azure Monitor. And friends, in case you are interested to understand how to monitor and alert data factory by using Azure Monitor, then this is the Microsoft documentation. And here you can see there is a very good video from Azure Friday. I hope many of you would have seen the series of Azure Fridays. The link to this documentation and all the documentation that I referred during this video are available in the description box. I hope you enjoyed today's session with 15 questions. Friends, it's super important for us to get your feedback. Please share your questions, your doubts, and most importantly, let us know what you want to see on the Tech Blackboard channel. You can send us your inputs in the YouTube comment section, on Facebook, Instagram, or you can simply tweet us as well. The links to all the social media platforms are flashing on your screen also available in the description box. And besides the social media platforms, you can also email us on connect us at the rate thetechblackboard.com. And once again, thank you so much for learning with us. I will see you in the next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching. If this video has added any value in your learning, a like and subscribe is highly appreciated. Share this video in your family and friends to spread and expand their learning. Your comments and feedback give me a chance to interact with you and I look forward for them. We will meet again in our next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching.